All right. A lot of people have questions about the amount of time that it takes for evolution to occur. We have a difficult time imagining that the little changes that we see happen, say, in dogs. Uh, you know, we can watch the way that domestic dogs 200 years ago didn't show all the incredible diversity of breeds that we have today. And, and we say, well, yeah, well, you know, I can see how I could s get a change like that. I could go from, you know, a few different breeds of dogs, you pick the traits you like, and after a while you get really different ones. But I don't see how that could ever lead me from, say, a monkey to a human being or a, a single cell to, to the diversity of life that is on Earth today. And, and the reason for that is because this kind of a change takes more than a couple hundred years. The problem is, as human beings, we don't conceive of more than a couple of hundred years. Uh, the average human lifespan is never longer than about a hundred years, and, and even when we project forward a generation or back one, we're still looking at less than about 200 years. And so it has never made sense for humans to be able to conceptualize this and to, to demonstrate this point. Um, I want you to think about like Roman times, or, or the time when, when Jesus Christ was on the earth, 2,000 years ago. I want you to take, take a moment and ponder how long ago that, that feels like it was. Um, now compare that to, say, uh, 1985, when Back to the Future came out, or, or the mid-1990s, when movies like Jurassic Park and The Lion King came out. I have a feeling you can conceptualize pretty well how long ago the mid-90s were. Or, and you can feel the difference between the mid-90s and, and the mid-80s. But you start to think back to, to 2,000 years ago, and that's, that's a long time. Now, now take, take that 2,000 years ago, and, and now compare that time, so when Roman soldiers and things were walking around, compare that to when the dinosaurs died out. If you're honest with yourself, you probably realize that, eh, those both feel pretty similar. They were both just a really, really long time ago. You kind of, you know, we, we have an amount of time. You know, I can conceive of yesterday. I know how long ago that was. I can conceive of, of six months ago or a year ago. I, I can even conceive of decades ago. You know, I know how long ago 1985 was, and I can compare that to the 1950s, and those feel very different to me. But when I start to get at times like 2,000 years ago or 65 million years ago, eh, who cares? It's all kind of the same thing. And, and this is pretty normal for us as human beings. Unfortunately, uh, it does impact our ability to conceive of geologic time, the kind of time that we're talking about for, for how long it took for evolution to occur, to go from a single-celled organism to the massive diversity of life on Earth today. We think of this as having taken place in the last two to three hundred years, periods of time we can conceive of, and it's just not going to happen. And you're dead right. It's not. Things will change, things may evolve, but not in a tremendously noticeable way over periods of time like that. But I, I want to take a moment to just reflect on the amount of time we're talking about. So, so if we said that, that 2,000 years ago, so we'll take 2,000 years, and we say that that period of time is equal to one day, one 24-hour period. So in this case, uh, Jesus Christ, Roman soldiers, they were on the earth just yesterday. Today we woke up, wake up, they're long gone. Uh, we're looking at this probably on a smartphone. Life has changed somewhat. But 2,000 years is one day. At a period of time like this, the dinosaurs still would have died out 89 years ago. All of a sudden we get this down to a period of time we can conceive of. 2,000 years is just yesterday. The dinosaurs are still gone for 89 years. This is, this is pretty incredible. Now, now, amazingly as well, we don't realize how long the dinosaurs were on the Earth because the first dinosaurs would have appeared 315 years ago. So they've been gone for 89, but still, uh, to the last dinosaurs, the first dinosaurs were, were more impossibly long ago than the dinosaurs are to us. 
So, so this is a, a ridiculous amount of time. Now, now the dinosaurs are actually even a fairly recent occurrence. If, for example, the first fish of the dinosaurs had been gone for 89 years. The first fish appeared on this planet, because, you know, we've still got fish. But the first fish would have appeared 726 years ago, which unfortunately is more time than we can conceive of. So now we've got to come up with a whole different unit to begin to understand this. So the first, so, so let's now pretend like the dinosaurs, not, not 2,000 years ago, that's not a day anymore. From now on, 65 million years, or the amount of time since the dinosaurs went extinct, that's going to equal one day. Okay? This is our, this is our new time scale. So if, if the dinosaurs went extinct yesterday, and we know this was a ridiculous amount of time ago, but this, if that was just a yesterday occurrence, 65 billion years is just one day. If that was the case, then fish still would be a little bit more than eight days old. That equals the first fish. Okay, so, so fish have been around for a while, a uh, little over a week. Of course, fish weren't the first life on Earth. Um, and and so, so let's go back a ways longer. If days are 65 million years long, just, and, and we know that this is a, a ridiculous, inconceivable amount of time, but, but say that's just one day. The first cells still appeared about two months ago, 60 days old. So, so 60 days, that's going to be the first cells. So the period of time between us and the dinosaurs happened 52 times before the first fish popped up. Fish were around for, you know, have been around for a little over a week, and, and we, at these, this period of time, we're just a few minutes old. We just popped up. Hey, hello, we're human beings. Life is great. Fish are still around because being a fish still works. Uh, Single-celled organisms are still around because being a single-celled organism still works. Of course, they've been changing over time, a lot of time. But that basic body plan is still working out. So I, I hope this helps put time, evolutionary time, into a little bit of perspective.